Hello and welcome to the Asian Game here at a very quiet, empty and deserted Stadium Australia now a couple of hours after Australia's 1-0 win to get their campaign off to a winning start. Of course, our coverage sponsored by SMC and we thank them very much for joining us and jumping on board to support us through this tournament. I mentioned it's nice and quiet here now, Michael. It wasn't the case a couple of hours ago. Record crowd uh, record crowd for uh, the, the Matildas, 75,000, over 75,000 here tonight got what they wanted to see, a 1-0 win for Australia, an opening day with both home nations winning, which is really important to get the, the tournament off into a good start. We were in Qatar, mm -hmm. who didn't get that bounce from the, the home nation, either doing well or doing getting a win on the opening day. So it's important for both home nations to get that win, to kick the tournament off onto the right note. Yeah, unquestionably. Um, very important for both Australia and New Zealand to win. Um, you know, it was, look, it's, it, it was an interesting evening this evening um, as you say record crowd 75,000 plus um, an interesting crowd an interesting crowd uh, I've, you know we've talked about this any number of times about crowds in Australia and maybe the lack of an <laughs> atmosphere and it was definitely an odd atmosphere and I think uh, even for large sections of it the Irish fans were massively outnumbered but were often <laughs> making the most noise uh, but ultimately a good result for Australia not a very good performance um, as we will no doubt touch mm. on the uh, the absence of Sam Kerr um, who pulled out um, we believe last night because of a calf injury had a major impact I think on the way that the team played um, but um, look Tony Gustafsson will be happy to get the three points on the board and uh, they'll they'll look at getting what they need from the next two games to get into the knockout runs. Yeah a win is a win they'll certainly take the three points and, and move on to Brisbane but you lead on nicely now to the biggest story out of tonight it's not the win it's the absence of Sam Kerr there was almost like an audible gasp across the, the media mm. centre when the, the news broke that she was out of the side, initially ruled out for at least two games, but the, the general feeling in that media centre that we've just come from is that she'll probably likely play no part in this tournament. Is that what you would expect as well? I'd certainly be surprised if she plays in the group stages, um, unless Australia go into that Canada game, the last game of the group phase, needing, needing a win. Um, and they maybe have to risk her off the bench, but you know, calf injuries are always a, a mm. difficult one. I mean, uh, Gustafsson was was really playing his cards very close to his chest. He kept he kept saying in the press his post match press conference that he wanted to respect Sam and respect the team by not revealing any details really about how it happened um, or the extent of the injury. And I think. When a coach is doing that, then you have to fear the worst. Um, look, it could be it could be kidology. They've already indulged in kidology with Sam and Gustafsson both in the press conference yesterday, and and, and acting as if there was there was nothing untoward. When we've since learned that they went into that press conference knowing that she was injured and knowing that the likelihood of her playing was very slim. This could be more of the same again, but you know, there's massive there's massive question marks put over in her involvement, certainly in the group stages and and likely in the, in the entire tournament yeah she, she was certainly active she was on the the bench i noticed after the goal went in she was celebrating jumping on one leg she clearly didn't want to put any pressure on that looked like the left calf it was that uh, she had elevated there but steph catley spoke after the game said it was one of the most heartbreaking moments that she's had in her career when she learned the news that sam was going to be out at least for these initial two games so much build-up. She's been the face of this Australian side for so long now. She's the yeah. captain. She's been across every billboard here in Australia, not just here in Sydney, but anywhere across Australia over the last couple of years in the build-up to this tournament too. Get so close to be 24 hours out from the start of the tournament to have that happen. I'm not quite sure as a, as a player, as a person, how you actually process it. Mm. that you're going to miss out on the biggest moment in your career mm. a, a home World Cup. I can't imagine what she's going through. She's got to try and put on now a brave face for the rest of the team because they spoke about the, the players in the mix zone after the game. They spoke about the fact that you know she is still in the team. She's still in every meeting. Sh she is reflecting onto the rest of the team as well, so mm. she needs to keep it an upbeat, positive mood. I'm not quite sure how she does that but that'll be certainly a storyline to follow going forward we'll talk about the match now there was the one change Mary Fowler came in mm. to uh, replace um, Sam Kerr Caitlin Ford went up top with Mal uh, Fowler sort of sitting in a little bit behind a little bit Irish 
they, they set up with a 5-4-1. They had five at the back and they frustrated Australia, really. Australia lacked some creativity, mm. couldn't play through that deep block and, and struggled to create any chances. No surprise then that the goal came from the penalty spot. It mm. seemed like it was either that or a set piece that was going to, to unlock the Irish. How did you see the game tonight? Um, frustrating. Uh, as a spectacle, I thought it was it was disappointing when you've got the eyes of the world on the women's game that it, that unfortunately we served up a pretty drab mm. affair. It was very disjointed. It was very quite attritional at times. I think nerves definitely played a part, particularly on Australia. I think the sense of the occasion was always going to be significant, and and that was always going to be a, a, a challenge for the team, even if they were at full strength, but. Obviously, losing somebody as important as Sam Kerr to the team, it, it definitely had an impact. You could see it in the way that players were misplacing passes, over hitting passes through balls and, and what have you uh, in particular. Um, look, the, the Irish were, were well organised. They were dogged. They were determined. They worked hard. Uh, they, were, they were disciplined for, for the most part, certainly in terms of keeping their shape and, and doing their jobs. It did get quite physical at times, mm-hmm. which... which um, which I actually quite enjoyed because I have to admit you don't ordinarily sort of associate that physicality with the women's game, and it was nice to see a bit of a bit of a, mm. a bit of robustness from both teams. Um, you know, coaches don't like to see that, but I think as a spectacle, it, it sort of it gives something to the game. It's not really not maybe for your 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 technical or tactical purists, but it's nice to see a little bit of a, a little bit of spirit from both teams. Um, you know, I think the Irish would come out of it actually quite heartened by the performance and holding a team of Australia's calibre to only one goal. Um, they proved themselves to be very difficult to beat. But look, Australia got three points, have got it on the board. Um, you would fancy a point out of their next two games may be enough to take them through. Certainly a win against Nigeria would have them almost certainly through. Yep. Um, so look, there's, there's, plenty, there's plenty for Australia to be positive about. But that big black Sam Kerr calf injury cloud will continue to hang over the team until until either she recovers or the team proves that they're capable of performing without her, which I which I don't think they did tonight. I don't think they No, did. I don't think I don't think that question was necessarily answered no. as to how Australia perform without Sam mm. Kerr. They're gonna have to get used to it because as I said, she's certainly not available at least for the next game and we'd be certainly surprised if she's available for mm. the Canada game down in Melbourne as well. I thought Katrina Gorry in midfield was was really good for the mm. Matildas tonight. There were a, a couple of players I, I didn't think it was it wasn't the, it wasn't a vintage performance. It wasn't a great performance. I didn't necessarily think they got overawed by the occasion. I think they seemed to handle the occasion mm. pretty well. Um, early on, you could tell that they were probably almost a little bit too pumped up because there was a lot of overhit passes. It's yep. almost like they had too much energy coursing through their veins. But I thought Katrina Gorry in midfield was just really controlled and calm. Um, the way she broke up play, the way, the way she then tried to link up and, and create opportunities for Australia. They didn't create necessarily a lot, but if there, if there was any creative spark, it was generally coming from her trying to play the ball forward into the channels. Mm. Um, she showed her importance to the side again tonight, but they're going to need the likes of Mary Fowler, Caitlin Ford to step up. And, and this is where the conundrum sits because Sam Kerr, as good as she is, she isn't necessarily the creator mm. in the side. She has a lot of games, even for Chelsea as well, where you don't see her for a lot of the game, but then yeah. she pops up in that one moment and that's all she needs to get the job done. Um, for So, you know, while they definitely missed her tonight, it wasn't the creativity that they missed. She is only as good as the service yeah. she receives and that's still the case for Ford and Fowler and the service wasn't there tonight. So we look ahead now to the next game, against Nigeria for Australia. Where do you see that the improvements need to come from? The defence generally stood up pretty well. I thought Claire Hunt was excellent Mm. again for a player who only made her debut a couple of months ago. Mm. She looks quite assured at the back. That partnership with Alana Kennedy looks to be set in stone. So where do you see that Australia need to make their improvements? I thought just touching on what you you said about the defence, one of the things that struck me was the, the Irish pressed them quite high up the pitch at times and put them and put the Australian defence in, in, in a little bit of trouble. They 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 stole possession a few times fairly deep inside the Australian half and I think that's something that they need to be they need to be wary of. But I think you're right. I mean look 
they've got to they've got to find a way to be more creative there was there was precious little creativity mm. really certainly in open play um, Mary Fowler was dropping deep and picking the ball up and there was a couple of times where she she held off a couple of players and, and, and looked like she was about to create something and then it didn't really happen yeah. um, but it was certainly being left to little moments of individual skill and, and sort of taking the ball past players rather than playing balls through and, and creativity coming from what you would expect to be sort of the, that maybe that traditional number 10 role that she was kind of trying to fill but she wasn't really at the same time mm. um, so they've got to find an answer to that I think look Again, as Gustafsson said in his press conference, it's going to be a very, very different challenge against Nigeria because they're a very different style of, of mm. football team. Um, so everything that they might have learned about themselves and about the team and the tactics and everything from that game, they can almost throw out the window because it is a completely different setup that they'll be facing. And they just have to be as confident as they can and rest as well as possible and, you know, get set and... and and, and, and get ready to, to, to do it all again. Yeah. The good thing, I guess, uh, Sam Kerr's out injured. Everyone else looks like they got through the game mm. unscathed, so there's no fitness mm. concerns. It seems at the moment going into that game against Nigeria. Um, my hands are about to get frostbitten, I it's think. So uh, it's freezing cold <laughs> here. Hence the beanie that you've got. That's where we'll then wrap it up so we can uh, go yeah. somewhere and, and try and get some, uh, some warmth back into our bodies. Um, we'll have more from the Women's World Cup across the next couple of days, couple of weeks. Michael, you're going to stay here in Sydney. I'm going back to Adelaide tomorrow where I'll continue to bring the tournament to you. And again, we thank our sponsors, SMC, for jumping on board and helping support us through this World Cup. As I said, you're going to stay in Sydney, but I'll see you in a week when you come to Adelaide because I've got a couple of uh, games that China are playing mm. in Adelaide against Haiti and England and Korea, Morocco as well. So I'll see you in Sydney for a week, but uh, so in Adelaide in a week's time. But uh, in the meantime, enjoy Sydney. I will do, and I'm looking forward to uh, a trip down to Australia's biggest large town. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> that is, as I said, where we will leave things for today. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Asian Game podcast here at the Women's World Cup. But until then, it's bye for now.